Welcome to ChinaSecurities.com and Chinese Small Cap TV, a daily fast-paced edgy show bringing the best press releases out of the Chinese small cap space every morning at the open so you can hopefully profit from them and maybe find your next great Chinese small cap investment. It's Tuesday, March the 10th. I got a number of great press releases for you. Let's start shop first with JA Solar Holdings. Trades on the NASDAQ under JASO. They put out their fourth quarter and full 2008 financial results for the year into December 31st. Here are some of the highlights. Q4 revenue, $144 million. That was above guidance of $124 million. Annual shipments of 277 megawatts. That's above the revised guidance of 250, 260 megawatts. For the full year, revenue was $800 million, up 102%. Love these Chinese small cap companies. Operating income, $101 million versus $65 million in 2007. I'm doing a little bit of rounding there. Net loss per dilute ADS, though, was $0.34 cents compared to a gain of $0.43 cents in 2007. So I'm not sure where the math comes for that. Maybe there's some one-time uh, expenses that the company had to take. Go take a look at that. They expect 2009 revenues to be in the range of about $830 to $950 million. And target for total production is 500 to 550 megawatts. Great numbers out of the company. Close was just at two dollars and seven cents just off their 52 week low of a dollar 55 but way off their high of 27 dollars so you're talking about a more than 90 percent drop here maybe a good entry point do your own diligence but good news out of ja solar next up taiwan semiconductor trades on the new york under tsm they raised guidance signaling a q1 bottom that's what i really like about this number about this here they sharply raised their q1 sales and margin forecast due to a rush of orders from china indicating a trend of falling sales that began six months ago has now hit bottom that's the corner of the company and that's really good uh micro kind of news for for chinese companies and chinese small cap investors they now expect first quarter sales to reach about one to 1.1 billion dollars that's better than the estimate they just put out in january so nice to see such a quick revision they also expect i really like this first quarter and operating margin to be between zero and negative two percent doesn't sound great, but it's way higher than the negative 15 to 19 percent that they previously projected. So both the revenues and net income way up. That means pricing power has come back. Really good to hear this. They closed yesterday at seven dollars and seventy four cents. Moving over to Chinatel, they trade on OTC under CHTL, making a repeat performance here. They acquired Peruvian telecom service provider Perisat. Uh, 90, they, per, they acquired 90% of the company's outstanding stock, 95% of the, of the outstanding stock, for about $2.8 million. Parasat holds key licenses in the country uh, related to internet, voice over IP, wireless, all of that. And uh, that's what, as, in, in addition, they've got relationships with the major telecom companies. So that's going to now China, that's going to allow China Tel to wrap this all together and put all to, all together in one interconnected service. At least that's the plan. George Alvarez, CEO of China Tel, said this: Parasat will serve as China Tel's entry point into the hot Peruvian telecom market. Internet access is one of the fastest growing segments in Peru. Their economies are growing pretty well. Five year over year go take a look at the data on the press release but this acquisition makes sense the voice over IP market for example is valued about 700 760 million dollars per year and you've also got Peruvian mobile telephony market is expected to generate about 2.7 billion dollars in 2013 so China tell definitely make an acquisition of the future trading at just 79 cents uh, about 68 million dollar market cap that's off its high of 329 for 52 weeks so go take a look at that uh, nice growth there uh, Cao Zing Mobile trades on the New York Stock Exchange under QXM. They announced that they're investing about $80 million by my calculations here to build Viva specialty retail stores in what they call upmarket shopping malls. They're a domestic manufacturer of mobile handsets. Their subsidiary uh, is going to set up 500 of these retail stores in the PRC. They've already set up four flagship stores in Beijing. I guess they saw the results were good enough there to continue. Uh, so they're going to build these near luxury jewelry and fashionable clothing and accessory counters in upmarket shopping malls. Might be kind of risky given the fact that luxury goods around the world taking a bit of a beating, but uh, the company obviously has some data they're working with, so keep your, eye, keep your eye on that. And they are a leading domestic manufacturer of mobile handsets in China in terms of unit sales volume, and this makes them pretty much fully integrated from design and manufacturing all the way down to direct retail. They closed yesterday at $1.48. 
And finally, Melco China Resorts trades on the Venture Exchange in Toronto under the stock symbol MCG. They announced that they received $45 million in funding from China Construction Bank. Generally, loans and things like that don't make it onto Chinese small cap TV. But this is an indication that uh, Chinese infrastructure spending and the stimulus plan is in effect because you got the China Construction Bank here loaning $45 to the company. The company's a subsidiary specifically. And what's going to do is uh, they're gonna, it, the loans are going to be secured by the hotel buildings and a portion of the land. It's over a term of seven years. Yearly installments going to begin in 2011 and end in 2016. And as you can imagine, the funds are going to allow Melco China uh, Resorts to continue the operation and development of its two premier four-season resorts. So I'd like to see that because it means the stimulus package is in effect. And there's been a lot of uh, macro and micro talk around China that, in fact, they're starting to see things turn already. Might be a great br uh, blueprint for the American markets, but good news coming out of China. They closed yesterday just four and a half cents, way off their high of three dollars and sixty cents. So go take a look, a, a close look at them. Make sure that there aren't any other one-time events that we're not aware. Of outside of this press release. That's a wrap. Number of great press releases for you. Great results coming out of China. As always, if you're looking for more great Chinese small cap companies, right on the front page of ChinaSecurities.com, you've got all of the greatest press releases separated by industry and exchange right on the front page so you can quickly find the one that best suits your portfolio. And only the best press releases make it onto the front page of China Securities from a sphere of about 250 Chinese small cap companies. In addition, for those companies that haven't put out news and for investors looking for other gems in the rough, then take a look at the directory there. About 110 companies are in there right now, growing every single day. Great summary descriptions uh, so you can kind of find the one that best suits your portfolio. That's a wrap. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.